if you're nervous. <laughs> Do you think we should date in high school? Talking about lustful dreams. Okay. This is the girl's TMI tag. Don't ruin my hair. Don't ruin my oh. hair. Man, I said I was gonna go easy. Your life does not start when you get a man. Your life starts when you become a new creation in Christ. High school sucks. What are your thoughts on body positivity? A boy can never give you the love that God can. Another big question to tie in with that is masturbation uh, sin in marriage. I don't know if that was too controversial. Ah, we'll see. Well, I, I can't talk about this on the internet. This is so awkward. I'm gonna get like demonetized or something. I'm like jacked. Yeah, I think so. I really hope nobody from my family watches this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Katie Patterson here and today I'm going to be answering your most TMI Christian girl questions. Last week on my Instagram, I put a little question box on my Instagram story and asked you guys to ask me all your juicy questions that you want to know. So today I'm going to be answering those and man oh man did you guys deliver. I saw like when I'm scrolling through these, I'm like, can I get talk about this on the internet? Probably not, but we're gonna. Yeah, make sure you stay till the end of the video because at first I'm gonna be kind of doing the lighthearted, lighthearted questions, like, you know, the not as controversial, not as, uh, throughout the rest of the video, I'm gonna be doing the more juicy, tea-filled, controversial questions. So, let's get going. Tell I'm like super nervous. <laughs> Probably gonna get banned. Before we get on to the video, I just want to remind you guys to like and subscribe to this channel for more. Also, follow my Instagram and TikTok at katie.patty with two eyes on each side. Make sure you go follow those and let's get on to the video. Gonna okay, so fun fact about me is when I get really nervous, I get red on my chest. So, I'm nervous. <laughs> let's just look at these questions. I'm gonna have to make a part two to this because there's so many questions. See? Like, oh what my word. And it keeps going. What are your thoughts on body positivity? You should love your body. You need to love your body because your body was created by God. And I love body positivity, but body positivity is not about getting attention or getting that acceptance from this world. Body positivity is loving your body because you were created by God. Loving your body because you love the creator. Because you recognize that you were created by the most beautiful painter. The one who made the most magnificent masterpieces. And that's God. And that's you. You are the masterpiece. And your body is the masterpiece. Your body, whether you're 100 pounds, 200 pounds, whatever. You are beautiful. Recognizing that your body is beautiful because of the creator. Not because of anything you've done. I don't know if that was too controversial. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, next question is what do you think about missionary dating? Now, if you don't know what missionary dating is, it's basically like where you date someone with the intention to change them. So flirt to convert, missionary dating. It's like you're on a missions trip, but with boys. This is super awkward. I do not support missionary dating at all. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you cannot change someone. That's not your job. You cannot change someone. You cannot convert someone. You cannot convict someone. That is not your job. That is God's doing. And you can't date somebody for their potential. You can only date them for who they are. And yes, boys can change and God can change their heart. Yes, I'm not saying that God can't. But what I'm saying is you cannot go into a relationship with the intention that you're going to change this person. Because nine times out of ten, they're gonna change you. Man, I said I was gonna go easy. I don't think these are easy. Okay, tips for my high school ladies. How to be a Christian in high school, any tips for that? I'm probably gonna make a big video about this because it's honestly, I think uh, most of my demographic that watches my videos is high schoolers. I honestly think it's so important to talk about how hard it is to be a Christian in high school. I was never a uh, born again believer in high school. I was always the labeled Christian. I was a Christian, yet I would still go get drunk, make out with boys, sleep around, blah, blah, blah. So. For my Christian ladies who are born again believers in high school, props to you. I, it is hard and I can only imagine how hard it is because high school sucks. You have the bullies, you have the mean girls, you have the boys, you have every, every type of temptation in that place and it sucks. Three tips that I always tell my youth girls that I'm their mentor for is I say, one, this world is not your home. You need to remember that. If this world is not your home, heaven is. So when you realize that this world is meaningless, yet what you do on this earth to bring other people to heaven not that you're the one that saves them, but to plant that seed to tell them about Jesus. That matters. So this world is not your home. So whatever happens to you on this earth, no matter how much pain or suffering, you will not have to suffer in heaven. And my second tip I would tell you is have the courage to be disliked. We will be disliked for our faith. How if the world hated, um, hates us, 
it hated Jesus first. The courage to be bold about your faith, not mean or, or ignorant about your faith, but just sharing the gospel and not caring about what anybody thinks of you. And three is why are you chasing after boys when you should be chasing after Jesus? Those are my three tips. I will probably make a way, way, way longer video about this. God is bigger and God is better. How to have motivation to read your Bible. Okay, my number one rule, my number one tip is to have a routine. Spend time with Jesus daily and have that daily routine that you stick to because that is where motivation carries. Oh, number one tip. So itchy right now. What should you look for in a man? A godly man. Don't look for a god. Ugh, how do I say this? Don't sit and wait for a godly man. Don't just be like, oh, my life starts after I get a boyfriend or my life starts after I get married. No, girlfriend, your life starts now. Your life started when you became a new creation in Christ. That's when your life started. You know, if you are considering dating a guy, date a godly man. I have a video that I'll leave in the description box down below. What I talk about is what a godly man actually looks like. Not looks like, but <laughs> not looks like. I'm not talking about what physically, but I mean like what characteristics he has. Colton. Come here. I'm filming. Oh, yay. This is the girl's TMI tag. Don't ruin my hair. Don't ruin my oh. hair. Bye, everybody. Bye. What a man. Do I think that Christians idolize marriage? Yes, 100%. Like what I just said in the last question. Guys, your, your life does not start when you get a man. Your life starts when you become a new creation in Christ. Christians should not just sit and wait for a husband. We're not just called to sit and wait. We don't need another person to complete us because Jesus already completes us. You know, how do you expect to honor and glorify God in the relationship when you can't do it all by yourself? We as Christians idolize marriage too much. My, my life did not start when I got into a relationship. It didn't. Do I honor and glorify God in this relationship? Yes, but was I doing that before? Yes. Let's talk about masturbating. <laughs> I can't. I really hope my parents don't watch my videos because sometimes it's super awkward. Let's talk about masturbation. Is it a sin? Is it not a sin? Yes, Matthew 5, 28 talks about how if even if you look at someone lustfully, you've already committed adultery in your heart. So what do you think you're thinking about when you're doing that stuff? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, you know, sex and sexual intimacy is meant for the marriage bed, is meant for marriage. It's supposed to be with your spouse, that you're only thinking of your spouse like that. Is what I'm doing honoring and glorifying God's design for sex and masturbation does not honor and glorify God's design for sex then but there's good news you can overcome that sin because Jesus is bigger God is bigger God is better so turn to him for your strength I'll probably make another video all about this I have a couple videos about like porn and sex and stuff but maybe I'll make one just dedicated to masturbation so if you want that leave that comment down below another big question to tie in with that is masturbation uh, sin in marriage I'm gonna get like demonetized or something okay there's a lot of controversy about this question. They'll say masturbation is okay in marriage as long as you're thinking about your spouse. And some people say, no, it's not because you're not um, honoring and glorifying God's design for your spouse doing that to you. All I'm gonna say about this is I personally believe it is up to personal conviction. I think you need to talk to God about it and ask yourself, is what I'm doing actually honoring and glorifying God's design for marriage? That's it, that's all I'm gonna say about that. How to deal with boys. Never, never find your validation in men because they're disappointing. They, just like we are girls, we're disappointing too. We, we suck. You know, boys and girls, we suck because we, we are imperfect people. So when you put your worth and validation in perfect people, they're gonna disappoint you. They're gonna hurt you. Even if it's unintentionally. You cannot find your worth in somewhere that God never designed you to find your worth in. God only designed you to find your worth in Him. And that's why He calls you loved, He calls you beautiful, He calls you valued. He'll never break your heart and He will never disappoint you. A boy can never give you. So you need to stop trying to find your worth and validation in boys. So how do you not find your worth and validation in a boy? You get up every day and you build your relationship with Christ because God is the one who changes your heart. God is the one who changes your desires. God is the one that makes you fall in love with yourself, not because of anything you've done, but because of who He created you to be. You build your relationship with God, with the guy that really matters, God. Talking about lustful dreams. Sometimes you can't help it. You wake up and that's what you were thinking about. But what you can do is change things in your life so that those dreams don't happen as often or eat if ever again. And you need to look at the music and movies you watch and listen to because what you fill your mind with subconsciously has an effect on what you think about, what you dream about. So if you're listening to songs about like sex and bodies and all that, what do you think you might be dreaming about? Same with movies, if you're looking at sex scenes and that's like 
very sexual, what do you think you're going to be thinking about? Put boundaries in your life so that you don't have those lustful dreams because again, that is a sin. If we look at Matthew 5, 28, lust is a sin. So just monitor, put some boundaries. Boundaries are your best friend. It's a prayer you pray to avoid sexual sin. Now, somebody actually sent in their prayer and I absolutely loved it. It's of temptation whenever you want to watch porn or masturbate or you want to go have sex or whatever that may be. Pray this prayer. Lord, please provide for me the desires of the spirit and help me flee from those of the enemy. Please help me flee from these temptations knowing that you are stronger. Pray that prayer. Mine basically just goes like, God, I rebuke this. God, I rebu rebuke this, I rebuke the enemy. I know you are better, give me the strength to overcome. You need to pray immediately in those thoughts. You need to pray immediately when you are facing temptation. Do you think we should date in high school? I'm gonna ask you this. Have you met a boy in high school who is genuinely a godly man? who genuinely does not want to play games with you, who is dating with your best interest, who is dating to guard your heart, who wants to put boundaries. Have you met him in high school? Are you the godly woman that's going to do the same? The godly woman and is he the godly man? Because in high school, I was not the godly woman, let alone did I meet a godly man. I was not a godly woman and I should not have gotten in a relationship in high school because I broke a lot of people's hearts and I got my heart broken too. You need to ask yourself that question because I think you already know the answer, you just don't want me to say it. Let's talk about insecurity. I struggle with insecurity still too. I'm not perfect in any regard to this. It helps me a little more. I claim that title as a daughter of a king and that I'm not beautiful because of anything I've done. I'm not beautiful because I'm wearing makeup right now. I'm not beautiful because I've done my hair. I'm not beautiful because I put on a cute outfit. I am beautiful because of who designed me. I'm beautiful because of who created me. Just like you are. You are not beautiful because of anything that you have done. Beautiful because of who created you and who designed you. Insecurity sucks. We need to start acting like a daughter of a king and treating ourselves like that and recognizing that we are one. Can you still wait for marriage if you've already had sex? Yes, it does not matter if you've had sex yesterday, it does not matter if you've had sex a year ago, you can still wait for marriage. I'm waiting for marriage and I've had sex with everybody in the book. That was a joke. Uh, that's part of my testimony is I used to sleep around and so you can still wait for marriage. I am waiting for marriage and it's hard. But I'm actually gonna leave my sex testimony video down below because I talk about what sex did to me and how I was feeling and the untold truth about not waiting for marriage. You can still wait for marriage. It's gonna be hard, but it's for your protection and it's to guard your heart. How far is too far? My friend Asia said this really, really amazing thing that I absolutely love and I'm gonna totally butcher it, but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. The boundary should not be that even if you cross it, you're in danger zone, that you have dove into sin. It should be that even if you cross that boundary, you're still safe. The question should be is how can I honor and glorify God in this relationship? Is foreplay honoring and glorifying God's design for a relationship? No, before marriage I'm talking about. If this is making any sense, I'm really hoping it does. Okay, for my last question, we're gonna be talking about jealousy. So you have to recognize that God has made that person with a purpose just like he has made you with a purpose. There is no comparison because you're two different people. When you're jealous about somebody else's calling, you're really just insecure about your own. You need to step into um, your calling. You need to be obedient to God and only focus on God, not about this other person. This other person is on their own journey. This other person has their own insecurities, has their own baggage, has their own struggles, just like you do. God, ask God to change your heart. Pray for your heart. Pray for that person's heart. Pray that God would change your desires about this person because at the end of the day, they suck just as much as you do. We are all sinners in need of a savior. So instead of being jealous about them, focus on who you are and who God created you to be and find that out first because I can tell you it's you're amazing, you're beautiful, and God has made you with a calling specifically for you. Okay guys, that was my last question. I love you guys and I really hope this helped. I'm going to be definitely making a part two because there's so many questions that I honestly didn't answer that I wish I could get to, but I don't want to make this video like 30 minutes long. It's probably already really long right now. So this don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more. You know, follow my Instagram, TikTok, the whole shebang, comment your prayer requests, comment what videos you want to see next. And yeah, I love you guys and I'm praying for you and I'll see you on Monday. Bye.